G'day and welcome back to another video with Eno here from Fantasy Take TV. We're going over the round seven review. Um, finally in the green arrow this week. Been a few weeks of reds going back from, I think, yeah, as I said last week, started like 6K and then just steadily declined all the way to about 30K. So with a 2,441, we went up about 3K spots and um, consolidated the ranking at about 28,000. So you'd think with a score like that, in previous years, you'd uh, you'd jump up more than that, but it was it was a massive scoring week. You know, Stewart one eighty and Neil, Gorn one seventy, you know, Tweet one sixty, a couple more one thirties and forties from some highly owned players, and um, unfortunately, we d didn't have one of them in Max Gorn, and we we didn't nail the captaincy choice either. So that's where it cost me points, as well as um, Sean Darcy on the bench for for the one week with his concussion. So. We're sort of down a couple of primos, and look, we're already well behind on good teams anyway, as far as sort of on-field scoring, having to field still a couple of average rookies each week, so fully expected, but you can't, uh, look, I'm not complaining with a, with a rise in ranks at this time of the year, um, we need we need a lot more of those, so I'll just try and keep it short and sharp today, we'll be doing the podcast tonight, and then um, if you didn't catch the video on George's channel last Friday, um, we'll probably do one of those again, where it's just... Uh, whoever can turn up, me, George and JD, just, just roll through our teams and what the trades are for the upcoming round and just how we'll line up. So we'll probably do that again on Friday. But yeah, we'll just quickly go through my team and um, Tommy Stewart with the 187, his best score of his career, which is unreal. Um, only caught a bit of the game, but he was just dominant, 40 touches and 40 marks, just just unbelievable. you think without him, they probably would have lost by, by a fair margin. So um, yeah, he's averaging 120 on the season now, and look, he did miss that game with the gastro, but not much you can do, and he's now, you know, over 600k, and um, going to be continuing to go up with that score, so yeah, um, we'll talk more about him on the podcast, but yeah, happy with, with Tommy Stew. Sicily, been a great trade-in, yeah, at 500k a couple of weeks ago, just producing good scores, um, he's looking everything like a top six defender right now, so really happy that I got Sis in after not starting him but yeah very very happy with him Shorty into the midfield that was a very strange decision um, in my eyes and one that I think he had a, you know one or two CBAs at the end of last week when the game was sort of over didn't think that would continue he was named in the center square and I'm thinking surely this isn't a thing and, and sure enough it was and look you can't gather much from a west coast um, or playing a west coast team that was just so poor like um, he was able to do what he wanted. No one was barely on him the whole game. And obviously when that happens, he's kicking inside 50 or he's just kicking in general. If you give him that much time and space, he, he'll do what he does um, with the footy. So don't expect that to continue or, you know, definitely not playing teams of that, um, of such poor quality. But um, I'm still not sure how I feel about him in the midfield. Like it's 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 really good for his ball use. Is it good for uh, for super coach and for fantasy going forward? I'm not sure. You know, he's not the biggest body, or he's far from the biggest body. Um, but I guess he's going to be more of that outside midfielder, and, and we're just going to try and use him on the outside to, to get it into his into his hands and onto his legs. So I guess it will continue in the short term. What it means though for Shorty, I'm not too sure. But um, got the pies this week. We'll see. It. We'll see how it goes. Really, but yeah, good score from him, Dawson. Um, Crows got absolutely dominated, um, and just he just wasn't able to sort of get into it at all. And then I think in the last quarter and second half, as usual with him, he, he had a big. Um, I think he had like eight or nine touches in the last, and all at one hundred percent. But at that point in the game, when it's well and truly dead, you don't get many points for those. So um, yeah, wasn't able to ton, but yeah, still happy with with Dawson. Dacos, one I'm just happy to keep holding until until he's by. I think he's got the last buy, so. With the lack of defender rookies, sort of this, um, you know, popping up, the only way he can go is up to a primo, and, and I don't want to really do that until, yeah, around the buys. Um, you know, still want to keep fielding him, and he'll hold around 400k, um, I reckon, until then. Um, maybe with the scope to go more if he gets in a in, in a decent score. So, yep, we keep him there. Had to field uh, SDK this week, and he pulled it out with a 77, which is his best score of the year. So, happy with that. He looks really impressive. Um for a young key defender so um yeah happy with him and he you know might be one i just hold on to all year um as sort of your d7 backup for any injury so happy with deconning hewitt of course we all know didn't play with the calf uh knock he should be back next week and then hinge with the crows sort of getting smashed 
Um, and I think he had 20 in a goal in the Sandville. You'd think hopefully he came back. Um, as you can see, again, I was the same last week. I had 1,000 in the bank, but with the moves I made, um, I needed to trade Paddy uh, McCartan over Hinge as well. So um, did that to get Oliver, and, and maybe it'll pay off if Hinge gets back to the team, which I think he just, you know, surely he's in their best 22. But we'll see. Jack Steele just chugs along, chugs out another 120 um, in that uh, disgusting game up in um, Cairns. But, yeah, you just don't ever worry with Jack Steele. Um, McRae, so yeah, this is this is the uh, the annoying part of the week, and where literally you look across all the lines. He, him, and Zach Butters, the two lowest scoring premium players, so to say, um, and one of them's got the captaincy on him. So it's just not much you can do. It's just yes, I should have taken Oliver, and I actually was going to, but just being a very poor decision by me, I had the emergency on, you know, every line, and I just didn't have. Um, a way of doing it where I wanted to bench George Hewitt, or sorry, put Hewitt on and, and um, use him as the as the captaincy score, but um, yeah, couldn't couldn't do it because I couldn't place an emergency on whoever I was going to take off since everyone else was already locked. So yeah, rookie mistake from me there. That's something you should really look ahead of time. Um, but um, yeah, so I was still confident McRae would go all right, and and sure enough, he didn't. Um, Annoying when you got Neil, who we'll talk about going 187 and then Took 160 as well um, the next day. But yeah, just, just lost about, you know, at least 40 points there and then possibly more if you had the nous to go to go Neil or Took. But, um, you know, we, we move on. It, it's just going to happen, things like that. But I definitely was in the camp of taking uh, Oliver. I know it's a, not a great VC score, but see, this is exactly what can happen. You lose 30 points. Um, so... Yeah, look, we moved past it this week. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you my setup shortly. But yeah, Neil, super impressive. Absolutely insane game from him. Just bolt contested ball, um, was doing everything, involved in everything. So um, yeah, he looks absolutely back to his best. And then Oliver just, just chugged along. I think he butchered a little bit, but um, yeah, happy with getting him in. He won't he won't be as cheap as he was um, for a long time. And then two, great bounce back. Even after the first quarter, it was all happening again. He had about six touches <laughs> with a few clangers and um, was on, you know, I think about eight points or something and then just chugged out a 150 um, points over the next three quarters, which is unbelievable. So needed that from him. You know, he's, he's surprisingly more of a pod choice in the midfield. I think only owned by about 30% of, you know, the top ranked team. So compared to guys, you know, like the others who were over 50%, we really needed a big one from Took, uh, and we finally got that. Jared Berry we held on to just because I was able to make the moves trading Cherry, which we had to, and, and um, others. So we had to hold on to him, and I wasn't totally um, on board with that, but I thought, you know, he's probably the one that could maybe get a better score out of, but wasn't able to. He's pretty much lost all his CBAs, now just playing wings, so he'll definitely go this week. Horn Francis wasn't much from him. Um, you know, he got his 20 touches, but um, just, yeah, really hoping for that big score. Hold on, hold on to him for one more week, but um, he'll have to go most likely as well. Um, and then Josh Ward got rested. We use him as a loop for Greg Clark, who I brought in on the Friday just as a bit of a punt because, um, you know, if I went with a Roses or something, I would have had to feel, you know, worse rookie, and um, that paid off in the end. That got me 50 points, basically. So, um yeah, he looked good, Clark. Didn't really play in the guts, but mostly wing all day and um, just got, you know, involved quite a bit. So, yeah, definitely fielding him from now. Uh, McDonald with a 55, that's all right. That'd hopefully get his cash up a bit over 200 if, if possible. Um, and then we've still got Owens there rotting on the bench um, until we can trade him at some point. Uh, ruck line, we got Prusy. Just solid, churning out the 110s every week from the, from the big fella. So... Hopefully he can get through to his buy um, without any mishaps or injury, um, and then he will he will hopefully be over 500k almost maybe, and um, then we can upgrade him to to a premium ruck um, in Max Gorn, who we just don't currently have and can't get until he he stops dominating, and I don't think that's really going to stop anytime soon. I think he gets the Saints this week, Gorney, and then um, next week gets West Coast, so that'll be lovely. Yeah, watching another 200 go. Go from him, but there's not much you can do. And then we had to field Sam Hayes, of course, this week because uh, Darcy was out with concussion. So we'll, we'll be able to swap that back this week and get Hayes off the field, who, yeah, struggled a little bit. I still wouldn't be totally worried if you if you had to field him for now. But, um, yeah, it'll be good getting him 
to the bench. And then the forward line, um, we've got Dunks there. Just, yeah, unbelievable game from him. Best on um, best on ground for sure. Kicking a couple of goals. Um, Heaney just chugging out nice scores. You know, his, his ceiling, we know what he can do with his ceiling, but his floor is definitely raised. Now with just the, the added mid-time he's getting and um, just how good he's playing um, in, in good a touch. You know, he did go missing for a quarter and a half there, sort of in the second half, and was still able to pop up in the last quarter and kick a couple of goals. Um to sort of save his score a bit, but, you know, I'm just not worried about Henny at all. Swans are playing decent enough. I think they get a pretty good matchup this week. Yeah, Gold Coast at home. So, you know, you just know that big game's coming from Henny as well um, around the corner. So, um, yeah, very happy with him. But it's sort of a bit of a bounce-back game to some extent. Played a lot of midfield. Uh, could have kicked the winning goal late, which would have probably helped him ton up. But, um, yeah, he, he was good. Cogs isn't getting any midf- midfield time himself, but he's still managing to churn out some good scores, kicking a few goals as well. Um, Nick Martin is just unbelievable. I don't know. I said it last week. Uh, everyone's probably saying it, how the hell he wasn't playing in AFL footy before now is ridiculous, but he's just so calm, so cool, so clean. It's just ridiculous. that He's literally averaging the same as Butters, 91 this season. So we'll be holding on to him for as long as we can. And then I had to field a rookie here out of Dixon and Durden. Um, I chose to trade, uh, I think, yeah, BJ instead of Hayes because I was able to use Hayes as a loop if I wanted to to get the better score here. And then Dixon, 42, I just, you know, I'll give Durden a go against North and it got me 15 points. So happy with that. Um, now, just quickly, some ideas on trades here. I'm not going to go too long on this. I probably already have gone over than what I thought I would. Um, so we get George back on the field. Hinge hopefully is back, and that'd be great. I can't really get him on field this week um, with how I've done the trades last week, pretty much. Unless there's a downgrade option, he pretty much has to stay there. For now, um, Greg Clark will be fielding. You'd think Ward will be back, so I'm just just hopefully he is. Probably not going to field him, but depends on the trades. Darcy comes back on for Hayes. And then um, down here, we'll probably, yeah, stick with Durden for now, but we're going to be making some trades. So onto the trades, and we'll have to get rid of Jack Hayes. Barry is definitely going. And I can do the trades that I want just with these two out of the team. We'll move Connor McDonald forward here. Um, got to get Paddy Cripps in, you know, at this point. He's 520k still. With a 30 break even, that's that just seems like way too much value to pass up. And then Robbie McComb, who if he plays his third game, will get. Um, he got 20 touches and two goals in the weekend against the Bombers, which, uh, look, he did butcher it a bit by by going by his stats, but I think that should be enough to keep him in the team. Um, we'll get George Hewitt back, which is good. We'll get um, Darcy back also, which is good for Hayes. Greg Clark, we will be fielding over um, Josh Ward. Can probably loop that. Pardon me as well with Horn Francis maybe as well. The other dilemma here is do I save the boost or do I just boost and get rid of Horn Francis as well? Um, you know, I could probably even, considering that the, I know you can't see it, the dogs play on Friday night, I could just see what Robbie McComb goes. I think JD was saying something like this in the Discord today and, you know, maybe if he goes well, bench Horn Francis um, or even trade him um, early, use a boost and just downgrade him to probably what I'd do is get McDonald back into the midfield and get Paul Curtis from North Melbourne, um, who I really like the look of. So that's maybe a possibility. Then I'd have about 200k in the bank and then I could uh, probably get rid of Dixon, it would be the next week and then just make another um, downgrade somewhere like Durden and get um, and get Luke Parker. So you know I'd be able to turn Dixon and Durden into Parker and a rookie. And that would shore up my F6, which is still a bit shaky this week. As you can see, I'd have to field Durden or Dixon here for another week, which is not the greatest. But um, that's the way I'm thinking. And then after that, we'll, we'll have his day cost on field. We'll have, you know, we'll have to field another mid-rookie here, which is a bit annoying. So probably like a Ward um, and Clark. And then we've got Pruce. And then after that Parker move, that'd be it. So it'd be a day cost, two mid-rookies. And then getting that that primo ruck, which is obviously pretty much gone who you want. So, um, yeah, one defender, two mids, uh, one ruck, and then one forward currently. But I'm yeah, I am envisaging getting Parker next week, which he will rise again. He'll probably be about four, five forty, five fifty k. But 
Um, still great value for a pick like that. Um, well done if you got him last week for 470. So, um, yeah, that's the way we're looking. Hopefully, as I said, Hinge is back in the team. Ward's back from his rest. And we'll just get some more cash gen going because it is looking a bit dire. But um, I am thankful I went the sort of Bruce Hayes route because um, I think Hayes can still make another 150k from here as well. So, yeah, hopefully Bruce is by, you know, 500k by his buy. Um, and then we can start making some some moves then. But as far as who I want, the last defender spot has got to be either it's got to be Sinclair, Doherty, maybe Jack Chris, but he's like getting cheap at some point. Um, but it's just going to be about value and who's at the right price at the right time. Um, there's not really anyone to me that stands out more than the other. I think I've got you know most of the good ones with Stewart and, and Short and Sis, um, and obviously Hewitt, which everyone should have. Um, so yeah, we'll just make that call. That'll probably be at Dacos's buy in round 14. So won't make that call until then. The two midfielders, now this is the hard one. Uh, it's really tough. I obviously want Millsy. Uh, it's just going to be so expensive in in the short short time. So you can't really get him anytime soon. Andy Brayshaw is going to be very cheap and affordable in a couple of weeks. And that's probably the way I'm going to be leaning. Um, and then the last one is maybe like a Petraka who's still fairly cheap. Um, I do love Sammy Walsh, um, but I'm not sure about his role week to week. Um, at Carlton, there's the you know there's a couple of Adelaide guys, Laird and Keys. Um, that last spot's going to be tough, but yeah, I think Brayshaw is the one. Um, just because of how affordable he'll be after a um sort of a couple of low tons, and then that 77 on the weekend, that'll just get him down to about 550k in a couple of weeks, which should be nice. Um, I would love to get him this week over Cripps. For that North matchup, which is maybe possible, I'd have to use a third trade definitely to do that. Do that, but um, I just think yeah, Crips is too much value to, to pass up. Uh, then as I said, Gorn is who you want, and then yeah, Parker's the other one I'd be um getting in. So anyway, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the podcast, and then probably that uh, team selection video on Friday. All right, cheers. I got the mojo deal, we've been